boy boy is this a pile of good news right for more reasons than you might necessarily think and although we are going to go through the article right i do want to jump straight to the card design because this is probably one of the biggest problems i have with current uh, set design is it does not utilize generics right and generics are really the glue that we need a lot more of when it comes to flesh and blood, right? If you think about the, the total count, right? It's not even one to two, despite obviously generics being the, the cards that can play in every single hero. Now, in the case of something like Bright Lights, for instance, if some of those secondary mechanics like Scrap or Galvanize or even Crank were on generic style cards where it was applicable to everyone, but themed for Mechanologist, right? Imagine how much better that, that set could have been in terms of, of card interaction and card compatibility, because we've touched on this a lot in the channel. In fact, it's the, the first thing we've really talked about. The design of Fab is ever expansive, right? Anything can come out of the woodworks whenever they want, right? And it's sort of my problem with the way information is delivered also. So for instance, 15 heroes, what does that actually mean? Because it could mean literally anything, right? In, in the case of this, we get a new cast art. But it, it could mean, you know, a few Blitz, a few Normal, a few PvE, a few PvP, a few for UBF, right? 15 is a great number, but it doesn't actually represent anything tangible because we don't know what's actually connected to. And similar to that, set design is very much just, just the same, right? Cards can be anything, even in the case of class specific, well, we're now introduced to all new mechanics for Warrior, Guardian, and Brutes, and every single set can be something completely new. So I'm really, really glad to see that they are putting more focus onto the generic slot and making these systems and functions that they're introducing with new sets like heavy hitters actually applicable to everyone in the community, right? I think that's fantastic. And I mean, personally, a lot of these cards are gonna do, you know, decent formality, right? The whole wager system being able to generate gold and, and use that to fuel final act seems awesome to me. Anyway, we'll jump into the article now. So. Heavy hitters, right? Uh, we might as well scroll through this. I think we don't necessarily need to watch it, but I do want to look at the cards, right? So we have starting stake. Again, this is perfect formality. You don't have to take crown anymore, right? You can load these up and you can use this to generate gold tokens. That is awesome, right? So we have starting stake. If you control no gold tokens, create a gold token. Gold is actually efficient draw, so really good. Plus it's a three block as well. Then we have money where your mouth is. Right, your next attack this turn gets plus three, and when this attacks, you may wager, wager being the new mechanic, where essentially uh, you're betting whether or not you succeed versus your opponent succeeding. So in this case, you have to hit and all they have to block, right? And you create those precious gold tokens, but again, zeroing in on generic, right? In in bright lights, we'll use this as the, the focal comparison, or even uh, outsiders in terms of the majority of the uh, inertia, blood rot, and the third one, right? Frailty, right? Uh, while there are some generic, a lot of it was focused on the actual class cards, right? Uh, applying it to uh, like dagger attacks, wasn't there some, and arrows, and all together. Again, if it was more focused on the generic slot, again, themed around the, the classes in the set, but then more focused on the generic slot and making them uh, free to utilize or experiment with, with every other hero, every single system in flesh and blood would do better in my opinion at least right so money where your mouth is wonderful to see it's generic uh test of strength again generic so when this defends clash with your uh clash with the attacking hero so uh oh it's down here right why am i trying to memorize it so clash is reveal the top card of your deck and their deck and then if you have the greater power right you win and you get to generate whatever it specifies because they're all quite different on that one right seems like wages always gold but then test of strength and all the other clashes could be literally anything. But again, generic block in Malady, not so great, but I mean, it's a four block anyway. I'm sure there's there's some version of Malady that wants this. Uh, okay, what else? New Kassai and new uh, thematics as well as ability. So in this scenario, right, the old young Kassai is, uh, I guess the alternative, right? And then this is the main story one, so to speak, because we have both the adult version and the young version. The new Kassai looks great, and it, it sort of uh, leans towards the possibility that we get a, a different KO, 
where maybe wager is is their focal point so it's still that gambling aspect but instead of dice rolls it's more wager or even just clashing over and over again because you know clash is perfect for bruce and then uh for guardian it's not velda it is most likely brevet because we have the artwork somewhere i think it was on the retail section right uh marketing no nope, retail news pre-release uh maybe not there is a gorgeous picture of him floating around somewhere with the prize pool right uh, adult version preference so i'd also expect to see some sort of different version one where his ability is not focused on upf but again going back to the 15 heroes right so we got different cassai kind of most likely a different preference uh, potentially a different ko or a different brutes right so again same heroes same classes but different abilities and there's just so many ways you could twist that that again, I don't necessarily like the way information is delivered by LSS at the moment, but it's still exciting nonetheless. So yeah, so overall, this is this is great. If this carries on, but then they also go back and touch on um, some of the design choices and elements from Bright Lights, I'm going I'm to be very happy because I did a whole spiel about how Bright Lights is a good design choice. This feels like a, a necessary element, which I don't necessarily like, right? So Bright Lights is, if you're big on mech, grab some. Uh, otherwise, you know, pick up singles here and there. This sort of feels like they're leaning back towards, well, everyone needs to try and participate in every set. And that's so-so, but as long as there is good reason for everyone, in the case of, again, the mechanics being, uh, you know, split between the actual classes and then generic, that would be fantastic. I would also assume they're using generics mostly to capitalize on the new draft, right? The multiplayer draft. We don't see Crack Shuffle play, which is a bit disappointing. I think they could have tuned the numbers so it would work, right? Sure, it would have been a little bit difficult because you would have had to lean more heavily on the cards or come up with maybe tri-class cards or something like that. But yeah, we are still in the experimental phase, it seems like. In fact, we probably will never leave. It seems we continue to jump from idea to idea, and I don't know how I feel about that, right? Part of me doesn't like it. Part of me is excited for it because it means anything could happen, and that's interesting and exciting. But yeah, uh, some level of, of groundedness or consistency for Flesh and Blood, I think, would be nice. But, you know, this is a, a good start nonetheless. Okay, so new play day events, uh, right? With new promos, meh. Enter the arena. Okay, so a new limited format. So similar to Crack Shuffle Play, this is now the limited format for the set. So it's probably it's probably appearing that every season or every set, we're going to get a different stylized format. And then the, the prize from it, right? I believe is a special edition Command and Conquer, which is interesting, right? Because I was half expecting every single set to sort of feature a, a class specific Command and Conquer style card. We might still, and then, well, this is just uh, the, the trophy version, more or less, which, yeah, it's so-so. Again, it's sort of the only real cards you can count on are Cold Falls in terms of, of collectability, everything else at any point can become anything, right? Again, it's, it's the whole flexible nature of Flesh and Blood, right? There's aspects of it to love and there's aspects of, to, of it to, to not necessarily love, right? Wager, we already went over. Clash, we already went over. Uh, we have our actual class cards, then the generic. I'm hoping that the generics occupy the majority of the common slot, right? And that makes sense to, uh, in terms of the draft ability. But then it also means that by and large, there will be a great number of generics, again, allowing everyone to, to participate in these fun and flavorful uh, new keywords of heavy hitters. Then we have the new ultimate pit fight draft multiplayer. Yeah, cool concept. Uh, I guess maybe we're going back and forth, back and forth. Again, it's exciting, it's interesting, but it's not consistent, and it's it's a bit open the air. Until we actually see, you know, the whole year of sets or, you know, the few years of sets, there's no understanding of this. I really wish that LSS would give us a, a proper timeline, right? And it could just be set name and then the main format that it's meant for, right? So, for instance, Bright Lights, uh, you could do, like, single class, uh, heavy hitters, UPF, draft and then so forth and so on so we actually have a better understanding of what's in the woodworks rather than the the level of information we do get little by little right and again it being somewhat empty because literally it could evolve into anything right at any point it could pivot and become something else 
And then just the world premiere of it, right? So we've gone through it all. Yeah, so expand your slot will feature in it. I assume this will feature in every single set, so that's fine. Uh, boost configuration, 255 cards, one fable, five legendaries, 40 majestics, 67 star rares. That's interesting. 15 tokens. So some of the rares are tokens, I'd assume, by that, maybe. There's no, there's no why it's starred. Now, is it? Hmm. It probably was up somewhere. Uh, can I see it anywhere? No, no, to be eligible to receive the prize cards. No, but that would be somewhere on here. Curious. Or it might be, right? Am I, am I missing things? I might be missing things. Do I see? No, it's there. Okay. So, yeah. Not quite sure, right? Is it the four weapons? No. Okay. Uh, still 16 card packs, 24 per, per box, four per case. Done. Designed for booster draft sealed deck and constructed play. They should add UPF to it, right? I mean, it is a selling point. Uh, MSRP is still the same, so that's fine. Release celebration, six different rainbow for weapons. So I assume it's the main weapon of every single hero. Uh, the cold falls will probably be the armory events. So the usual little breakup. There is blitz decks coming with it. I am curious, four displays per case. Four displays per case, so six. No, okay, so it's just the usual uh, stylization of, of blitz delivery. I'm kind of interested why they don't continue with the round the table design. Again, this is... This is my biggest complaint to them. What is going on, right? There is no consistency with product design, uh, product delivery, right? Or actual card design. And I don't mean that in an overtly bad way. It's just what's going on, right? There's there's no real way to, to say, oh, cool. This set will have this style of blitz, uh, or this will have this, or that will have this, right? Blitz decks change, Blitz numbers change, everything changes, and everything can be whatever it wants, whenever it wants to be. And I just, just like a teensy little bit more information. Nonetheless, still super excited for it. And yeah, heavy it is. New heroes, new fun, and great so far looking use of generics, right? So hopefully this stays up and they are, again, a big hefty amount of the set, right? The shield is generic. The armor is generic and all together, all right? I just want to see more card compatibility across the board. And I do think generics are underutilized and this looks like a great return to form. Also Marvels, I don't like, right? This is too ambiguous because again, it's a scale from dragons and angels to <laughs> bright lights, right? So Marvels as a, as a term and a rarity to me is very meaningless. And again, like most things in the game, it's, it has so many interpretations that it is a worthless statement to me, at least. Anyway, heavy hitters, super excited. Three sets, I think it was announced for this, for this year. So that's exciting as well. Hope you enjoyed. See ya.